Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful Empowered Harmonizers. And we're zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on how to handle a very difficult situation, particularly when it comes to someone where you have very serious personality conflicts. Particularly that can be with someone who is psychopathic in nature. Um, when we are looking at someone who is psychopathic, um, we are talking about someone who is devoid of conscience. They're, de they're devoid of um, sort of a, a sentient feeling about them. They have a different way with which they perceive situations and life at, at large. And largely, it's one that is empty of closeness, warmth, and value-centered or sort of abstract value-centric way of living, um, way of conducting themselves, way of relating to others, way of getting by in life. And these individuals, because of this disorder, um, aren't always just, you know, the people who you see, you know, causing trouble in the streets. These are people who you can find in your workplace, who is in your family, who you could be married to, and or who you're attracting of these types, and you're trying, you know, you're, it's gotten worse perhaps in your life, and you're wondering really how to deal with this person. We've, I've been getting, um, we've been receiving a number of inquiries about how to really confront this. Particularly, uh, we have one viewer, who has, you know, she has her dream job and her supervisor is someone who is psychopathic. And she's now called in um, like the, the global uh, leader of benefits or their, their global supervisor to handle this situation because this individual is trying to smear campaign and cause trouble uh, for her. And, you know, it's really, you know, create, creating this triangle, you know, triangle, you know, triangulization and smear campaign, um, splitting, talking about her behind her back, very unprofessional behavior. This can be very daunting. This can be very scary when you're trying to come up against and deal with someone who is psychopathic. Someone who is perceiving of a lot of societal cues that most people don't see with their own eyes. They don't even become aware of. Someone who is psychopathic is hyper scoped out to reading the body language of others, reading the needs or vulnerabilities of others, finding the weakness of others, and then playing to these. So these people are going to go for the jugular. Um, if there is something, especially in a new situation, uh, for example, let's take our video, our uh, viewers, situation where she's at a new job. So here you come, you know, well prepared, um, you know, the, the job that you have been uh, preparing yourself for, cultivating and training your, for yourself for, and here comes your finest moment. You're, you've got your office and, you know, you are full of enthusiasm, passion. You're at your finest hours. You know, you're really sharp you're like the new broom that's like sweeping clean and you come as a threat. You come as just somebody who is new. You come as somebody to pick on. If this person didn't do this, this wouldn't be their job. But furthermore, when you're talking about someone who is psychopathic, these individuals are definitely all about causing trouble um, in a very deliberate and calculated way so that they can dismantle those people who are either high integrity, um, who are perhaps the ones with a different, um, you know, a certain background. Perhaps it could be your education. Perhaps it could be your love of life. Perhaps it could be your naivete. Whatever it is, they're going to really single out and try to go after the prize. So in other words, when they target somebody, it's always because there's something that they want that this person has. And even if it's just to show that they are better than, to show that they're more powerful, that they can outsmart, outwit, you know, out, um, 
you know, a smear campaign you out of your job so that their the tension is so unbearable that you just want to leave. It gives them a feeling of accomplishment to hurt others. So there is this tinge, definitely this tinge of kind of what you might call a sadomasochism um, with these individuals where for some reason, because of the way that their brains are wired and, and the way that they fire and the way that they derive pleasure, um, they have a sensitivity to dopamine. So when they really want something, they go after it full throttle. I mean, they just have a hypersensitivity. So this causes them to violate people's boundaries. It causes them to engage in high risk behaviors. It, it causes them to think differently about how can they maneuver things in their environment, very much like a, a, a chess game so that they'll come out looking better than, smarter than, more equipped, you know, how can they basically get people off the playing board if you look at the game of chess? And, you know, and and furthermore, um, these individuals will all also play to those people who have what they want. And so, in other words, to take it from them. So whether it's your innocence, whether it's your enthusiasm, um, whether it's that your natural way of being effervescent and bubbly and carefree and not worried, um, whether it's your stability, whether you're like a rock, um, whether you have beautiful children and they want to kind of ruin them. There's always this sort of ruinous, um, very, very, some people call it evil, but a very ruinous energy about them. They want to destroy the innocent. They want to hurt the good intention. They want to hurt the generous. They want to go after the lamb and show, you know, that that lamb it doesn't have all that humanity. In other words, humanity doesn't mean anything. Your enthusiasm, your your bubbleness, your your natural good looks or your natural kindness is theirs for the sort of ripping out and dehumanizing of you so that you don't have that a leg to stand on. Um and so it's to understand a really a very very um difficult dynamic to articulate of sort of their their mindset um, and how they sort of calculate and, and plan um, and sort of taking people down. Um, this is how they just derive a sense of pleasure or that they've kind of making their way in life. For the psychopath, they'll tell you it's just business as usual. People don't have, a, there's not a sentient sort of connection that they have to others. They don't really feel anything if they've hurt others' feelings. They don't feel anything if they've wounded their children. They don't feel anything if they've, you know, hurt a whole bunch of people. They, they don't feel a remorse. They don't feel regret. In fact, they don't really register the lessons. In fact, you can have a, a big fight with this type of person that's all out clamoring and yelling and, you know, and then, you know, words are, are done or whatever happened, you know, um, things were said. And these people, basically, they don't tend to maintain that, you know, that feeling like, well, we, we need to make, you know, we need to work through something here. They don't have that sort of connection to the limbic brain. They, 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 and it's just very, very um, uncanny when you see it. You know, you're like, how can you just be asking me? to do this and this after this and this just happened, after this has just been confronted. So for like this this viewer who's up against a psychopath, it's very difficult to reason with a person who can't be reasoned with. It's very difficult to have rules with people who don't abide by the rules. But even more in depth than that, there's you can't really speak the human language with these people because what constitutes a true human is to be humane. And that's really sort of lacking that that emotional context of meaning or value or significance is voided there. It doesn't have any meaning. Um, and so this person does not feel like they literally don't feel that they have done something wrong. You cannot reason with them, you know, why, you know, why did you just do this to my house? Why did you just do this to my bank account? Why did you do this to my kids? Why did you cheat on me? For them, it's because I wanted to, but they, they've they learned in life that they can't just say that. They need to project a whole bunch of other stuff and make and create the crazy making, what's called engineered chaos. 
And, you know, in other words, it's all to deflect. But, you know, number one, they're, they're very, very astute at manipulation, um, at deceit, at covering their tracks, of making it look like someone else did something that they didn't. So they're very good at the smoke and mirrors. Um, they're very, very good at putting words in people's mouths or, you know, you know, causing you to lose your focus, your professional focus, um, your own values. And it's a very difficult um, psychological mixture that they create in people, um, which causes people to really feel out of balance, um, like they're beside themselves, like they're not really running their own body. They're not really running their own mind. They can't get a handle on things. There's this feeling of being out of control um, while you're in their midst. And it's because of this energetic thought pattern um, that is one of manipulation that is very difficult to connect with. So if you're feeling a disconnect, it's because it's very difficult to connect with someone who is trying to outsmart, outwit, take down, find um, sort of a, a, a very corrupt, you know, decrepit or perhaps corrupt ways that this person is. So very deceitful. Um, there's a coldness, uh, a sort of, you know, a very lack of ethics, um, a lack of good housekeeping, if you will, in terms of like how they might run their business, um, lack of communication, um, very, uh, you know, sort of like there's an air about them that it's, all, you know, all, all about me, but it's even more profound than that. It's even more powerful. And it's very difficult to be around this person. And so the, the question is, how do you really go up against this type of energy? Well, to go up against it is to know it is just that. It is just their energy. And it's something that you are picking up with your senses. And even though it's very hurtful, the things that they, especially at the, at the workplace, and we have another viewer who um, this, this type of person happens to be her neighbor. And the tension is just so overwhelming that she feels a complete disharmony um, in her life. It, it she just doesn't she just does not even feel good in the neighborhood because there's this energy coming out of this house where the person's self hate is just so intense. You know you can just feel it, and um, I really feel for you people who are really dealing with this in your proximity, in your neighborhood, and in your business and. So how do you deflect it? How do you dissipate this very caustic energy, which can oftentimes move people to do things which they usually would not do? It's almost um, telepathic in nature, where it can cause people to do things, say things that they're really out of character. Um, it can cause people to feel like they're not running their own body. They're not running their own life. They're doing and saying things which are completely beside them. I've had people who have started smoking and they've never ever been a smoker, but they felt that they had to get away and just start smoking and leaving their job and doing these strange things which they would normally never do, but they were like literally forced out of their work environment by the energy of this person. They, the, the psychopath has a way to kind of exude attention. Um, exude sort of and changing your focus. In other words, where you can't really focus on the room. Um, it's very difficult. It's difficult to articulate, but they'll really sort of push energy around, if you will. Um, and this is very, very scary um, to encounter. This is not a typical type of person. Um, it's just, it's, it's just attention. For example, um, like we we're stating before, you know how you feel when you see uh, a seedy character walking down the street, and you can just feel attention. It's your, your, what you're feeling is their thoughts and their emotions and their violation energy. Um, you're feeling this manipulation energy, the breaking of the law, this unlawfulness that is not hitting you right. So you can just feel it. You can't even, you know, you can, you can see it, but there's something even more. So that's what we're talking about. The intangible becoming tangible. And so how do you go up against this energy? Well, it's to know that um, that's all it is. So you have to be able to name it and say, okay, you know, that is 
that manipulation energy. You need to be able to name it and then know that you're outside of it and that you still possess all of your goodness. So you might need to like kind of like look in yourself in a mirror. Just, you know, get get a, a sense of your own humanness. Get a sense of your own love. Get a sense of your own compassion. Get a sense of your own accomplishments because all that is sort of wiped away when you're around these person. It's just, you feel it's kind of like um, obliterated. It's almost nucleic. It's so strong. It just sort of is very destructive. So it can be destructive of your perspective, um, destructive of sort of your, you're feeling human, comfortable, natural. You're just feeling a very pressure, a very sort of pushy energy. Um, and so to, and to know it is just that, but you it is also to know that you are more powerful than that. So to do that, you have to disengage from the energy itself. So, and just say the words, you know, I am disengaged from that energy completely. I'm disengaged from that energy completely. So you need to disengage from it. So the energy that's trying to engage you completely say, you know, I'm disengaging from that energy. And just allow those words to sort of soak in as you say that, and then just see your yourself filling up with, you know, a good feeling. Um, you might call it love. You might call it light. You might call it happiness. You might call it peace. You might call it focus, you know, but it's the absence of this energy. So absence of the jitters, absence of the fear, absence of that intimidation that they're trying to sort of, you know, throw at you. So, and you know, I, I, I'm not taking these curves, you know, it's a personality conflict. You can, you can feel it, but oftentimes if there's something unethical there and this person who is now in a supervisor or like this person who's a, a, a neighbor, you know, they're going to have other people in their jurisdiction or, you know, like a supervisor, they're going to have all these different puzzle pieces or pawns that they're trying to maneuver around to make themselves appear a certain way. You know, you might call this supply. You know, it's like props. Um, it's the people who they have deceived. So they're able to kind of pull people in through the different things that they say, um, through their the way that they sort of, it's a very seductive energy. And oftentimes it's coupled with boundary violation or high risk behavior, which sometimes people will take as a relief to be around, like, wow, well, I don't have to worry about that because this person is so strong. You know, they're just going to carry, you know, carry this or carry that. So some people just, oh, it's like a welcome that this person wants to be this in this way. So some people will just go along but not be targeted. Um, and, you know, other people will just sort of feel their energy. It's like a magnetic, a very magnetic energy and just feel drawn to it and not know why. It's oftentimes there's a psychopathic gaze which is sort of transfixing on their their predatory, oh, very reptilian-like. So when people are caught in this gaze, they, they feel like it's, like literally they're getting sucked in. Um, you know, you and it's very difficult for them to feel like they can pull themselves away. So some people then equate this with power or seduction. Um, and there can be these sexual overtones when it's really a predatory stare. So if you look at a predatory stare of like, um, like a lion, an interspecies, like, a, in a, that's why they call the psychopath an interspecies predator. It's, it's one who's preying against their own kind. So just like, or like an eagle, an eagle, which is a bird of prey, you know, they're, they've got that, that vision, um, that eagle vision, which oftentimes is very difficult to make eye contact with. In fact, you'll oftentimes find that these people don't keep a lot of eye contact with people who they're trying to take down because there's, there's this coldness. Um, and they oftentimes don't want to connect with people. Um, they're not able to. Um, and so they'll, it'll, it'll further their feeling of being dominating or overwhelming to others. So they will be always sort of out of your ability to communicate. It's the elusiveness and so it's very important that you do not engage with these people in communication. Um, you will not win. Um, you do need a mediator. You do need to be objective. You do need to communicate in a very indifferent, 
neutral, um, fact-based manner and just saying, you know, exactly, you know, this is what is happening and it's making it a very um, uncomfortable, hostile work environment to be in. Where it's wrought with, and it is intimidating and uncomfortable because. And then cite the reasons that's making it a hostile environment. Um, you know, a hostile work environment is really what employers do not want. You want to be able to feel comfortable at ease and not having people with a smear campaign where they're, you know, obviously ignoring certain people and obviously, you know, making, getting catty little groups with others. It's, you know, it's very blatant, you know, that they're trying to push other people's buttons. So you don't want to engage in this sort of mind tricks. Um, you know, work environments to be collaborative, they need to be collaborative. There, there needs to be a cohesiveness and coming together, even if it's different ideas coming from different directions, you do need to be able to have that open air.